Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Secret People by John Bainham, who is actually John Wyndham. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb here, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs as I go along, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, The Secret People. The planners of the world's greatest engineering feat. The flooding of part of the Sahara Desert. Knew nothing of the life which teemed below their new sea. But for the accident which plunged Mark Sunnett and his girlfriend into a cavernous world, nothing would have been known of the catastrophe which now threatened the survivors of an ancient race. Their struggle against doom and Mark's fight for survival is the theme of this fascinating story. The Secret People, now published for the first time since 1936, presages all the imaginative brilliance which, with the publication of The Day of the Triffids in 1951, brought John Wyndham the universal acclaim he so richly deserved. So I'm going to read you the first paragraph of part one, chapter one, uh, mainly because it has an adverb in it, and as we all know, the road to hell is paved with adverbs, so um, we get surprisedly, but I think it works, I guess, in this context, although it is the weak point of this opening paragraph. On an afternoon in September 1964, the ears of the inhabitants of Algiers were unpleasantly assaulted by an uproar from the skies. The sound was different from the familiar drumming boom of the regular mail and passenger service, and it was equally unlike the staccato throbbing of the desert police patrols. It was, in fact, an entirely new brand of aerial noise, more offensive than either. The strollers in the streets stopped to look up, the loiterers in cafes moved from under their striped awnings, even the hagglers in the markets momentarily suspended business to stare surprisedly overhead. I like this as well, I think this is quite telling of his character. It was a long time since he had been allowed to indulge in the luxury of complete laziness. Of the last six years, business had occupied almost every waking hour. He had devoted himself doggedly to the uninspiring task of propping up a tottering shoe business, which only the timely death of an unprogressive uncle had saved from complete disaster. The firm of Sunnet had been established over a century and had been retained in the trade, and had retained in the trade a reputation for turning out good, reliable stuff. And that, the uncle, an inveterate recliner upon laurels, had considered to be good enough. The prospect of salvaging the hopelessly old-fashioned firm had been slender when Mark inherited. Almost without exception, his advisers had been for selling to cut his losses, but Mark had developed a streak of obstinacy which surprised himself. He had found himself looking at the rocky business of Sunnets not merely as a means of livelihood, but as a challenge, and he went to work as much in a spirit of bravado as from hope of gain. I like this bit about the cat, it says, Assured of its safety, she brought a small bowl from the corner. Bast looked at the contents, sniffed with that reserve common to cats, and began to eat with no reserve whatever. This is an interesting little quick conversation. You do not worship animals, he asked. No, Margaret said, at least not in our country, she amended. And the gods are not angry. I don't think so. You see, ours are different gods. Garm considered the point. The idea of gods unassociated with animals was difficult, but he managed it. Then since you are not afraid of the gods and the animals must eat much food, why do you not kill all those animals you do not wish to eat? We make them work for us. But you talked of special metal creatures you had made to work for you, far stronger than men or animals. Yes, but for some things it is cheaper to employ animals than machines. Garm looked wonderingly at Bast. Stop using adverbs, God damn it! This was interesting too. Wasn't it rather that her people attached an exaggerated importance to the more sensational and spectacular forms of death? At home, more indignation and publicity was expanded upon one murder, justified or not, than upon a hundred fatal road accidents. But death was just as final. Obviously then it was the manner which counted, not the act. If it were not so, there would be no difference between hanging by the law and hanging by private individuals, whereas everybody knows that the law may do many things which the private individual may not. Yes, it was the manner which stirred people's emotions. If you were to shoot a man because he was a public danger, everybody would be enraged. But if you killed an excellent citizen through negligent driving, nobody minded very much. It was all very confusing. I like this little exchange here. Do you know, she said, we made a record. What do you mean? Well, nobody else has ever achieved a shipwreck in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Mark smiled too, and his spirits rose astonishingly. Come to that, he said. I shouldn't think any girl was ever before kissed on a Saharan island. There's ingratitude for you, said Mark. There's nothing more egocentric than a cat. Very true. And they decided to call the cat Bast uh, after the cat-headed goddess of the Egyptian. <laughs> and I like this a little bit as well. Um, so they're engaging in this, like, disaster, basically. Yeah. She broke the surface, spun like an ill-balanced top, and was carried away broadside. He sat up and prepared to loosen the belt, but even as his fingers reached the buckle, there came a thunder of water on the reef, loud despite the soundproofing. The craft rolled like a floating barrel and sank again, rose again, and drifted back once more beneath the falls. She spun, twisted, rose and fell, like a woodchip beneath the weir. The brains of the two within swirled giddily. 
Nothing to do but hope, Mark told himself. Bound to float free sooner or later. My God, to think that they pay for things like this at fun fairs. Hope I'm not going to be ill. There's a guy uh, reference called Mahmud El Jizza, which is a great name. One of the characters, he says, most of the time I expect the worst. It's so good when it doesn't happen. We get a few unnecessary end bombs. Again, I guess I, this is a, a product of its time, but still no fun as a reader. Someone says something relievedly, which annoys me, unnecessary adverb. Plus, if you want to show that someone's a leave, a relieved, show it, don't just tell it, you know? One of the characters keeps going, it's me and the boys, and I just thought of the meme. <laughs> Another unnecessary end bomb. I like this quote here as well. The trouble with people like you is that you have such a poor idea of the antiquity of man. I tell you that the pygmies represent one of the oldest living races, and you're staggered by a hundred thousand years. It's a mere flea bite in natural development. Why? Piltdown man probably lived three times as long ago as that. The effect of all this Genesis business is to make people believe that nothing ever happened before about 2000 BC. I assure you it did, and it had been happening for a long time. There's a typo there. I like this uh, rot. The religions aren't dying. Just because you give a thing a different name, it doesn't change it. You can have a religion without an anthropomorphic figurehead. Just as you can have a state without a king. Democracy, socialism, communism, they're all religions. Mark objected. No, they're political theories. Well, when did you ever find a religion that wasn't somehow bound up with the political theory? I tell you, they are just as much religions as Christianity, Mohammedanism, or Buddhism. They're a superstition. What else but a superstition could produce the fantastic idea that all men are equal? Reason certainly could not. Getting a bit weird now. And then at the end, one of the guys has found, uh, it's a light source that doesn't emit any heat, and he's like, do you realise how significant this is? And it got me thinking, I don't know whether even today, do we do we have access to heights to light sources that don't emit heat? I mean, isn't light a, a byproduct of heat, like caused by chemical reaction? I don't know. Somebody let me know in the comments. But yeah, overall, the Secret People by John Wyndham. I thought the concept was more interesting than the execution. It's also quite a claustrophobic feeling, but because you spend so much time like underground in this cave system, where all like the walls are covered with slime and fungus and stuff, and it's just quite a cloying, unpleasant little setting I guess. I mean that's no fault of the author's own and, and in fact I think it's necessary for the story but I don't know it does weigh on you a bit as a reader. Overall um, I don't know I think it could have been done better and I think uh, Wyndham has done better stuff so I gave this a three out of five but it was just eh, it was all right. So there you have it that's what I made of The Secret People by John Wyndham as always don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye